Interesting question there, Michael Scambati, uh, just before we get started, asked that I see the Universal Monster films first. I grew up watching, you say you grew up watching Jason, Michael, Freddy, but curious which I prefer. Oh, I definitely prefer the Universal Monsters. Um, I'm not a big slasher movie fan in general, though I do, like I said before, I love the first Halloween film, with Michael Myers. I think it's just a solid, well-done movie and a well-done monster film. Uh, the first Nightmare on Elm Street is interesting. Really like the concept, the idea. But it's starting to, you know, it's, it was really in the, the mode of, of slasher films that were really big. Uh, in terms of the Freddy Krueger movies, I think Wes Craven's New Nightmare is just amazing. That's that's a that's a that's a really solid film. Love the idea of it. Uh, goes back to Gollum and the Dancing Girl, you know, in in, a, in some ways, but uh, which is an old uh, German expressionist silent film. But uh, but yeah, so um. You know, I'm a Universal Monster film guy first, but I like the Hammer Horror stuff too. You know, the Hammer versions that he did and everything. So, good question. Before I move on, Eldridge fan for 499, thank you so much. Said Myers is the best in the first movie. Yeah, I agree. He's just a human being, not supernatural. And if you watch, you see Myers is a strategist, scouting and planning. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. They didn't really start the whole supernatural thing until, was it two or four? I know, too, they did the whole, like, he's the brother of thing. I think it might have been started in two. Anyway, on the one hand, you're right. He's not a supernatural creature. On the other hand, though, he kind of is he's more elemental. You know, as the doctor says, he's, uh, Dr. Loomis says he, he's, he's, he's the boogeyman. He is the elemental evil, even though he's, he's a human. It's kind of like a joker. Uh, calm down, Michael Scambati. I know I just said the word joker, <laughs> but he's kind of like a joker. Uh, analog in that he is a human being but he's a perfect representative of true elemental evil you, you get the backstory of him as a child killing and that's all i want you know the whole i think rob zombie really ruined the first halloween film when he tried to give you a background into like the the issues that mike myers had as a young boy you know and torturing animals and i was going like stop that john carpenter wanted to tell a boogeyman story and and how and, and it's more shocking and more uh, profound that any single one of us could be that boogeyman could turn and kill your sister and then all these people or whatever you know it's it's acknowledging the evil is in within humanity the possibility of it is there which is something that these monster archetypes especially once we get into the jekyll and hyde wolf man is really going to start developing for us so uh so yeah good points about halloween it's um if you haven't seen the first halloween film you know, you, you might think, oh, I don't really like slashers. I don't want that. There's really, I don't even think there's hardly any blood in the first Halloween film. It was in 1978. Is that it? It's considered the first slasher film, although it's nothing like what you think of as a slasher film. You know, it's just a slasher film in the sense that there is a guy killing people with a knife, but you're, you're not like seeing him sever somebody's head. You're not like, you know, it's it's not like slasher films would become in the 80s. Uh very uh, very mood evoking um says a lot of interesting things about good versus evil and the nature of evil in the world that that's what i like you know that's what you know i don't just like a film that might may or may not be a horror film because it just sort of glories in a bunch of you know i like i'm more into terror movies is one way to parse it out and radcliffe who i'm not crazy about as, as you heard me say in the previous stream or video but she did have a really great quote that Boris Karloff of all people would certainly agree with, you know, that Boris Karloff thought of his movies, not as horror films, but as terror films, meaning that he's not there just to like rip somebody's head off or whatever that it's, it's mood evoking. It's suspense evoking the way. And Ann Radcliffe put it uh, was basically that a, a terror story enhances the senses. Think about something like Edgar Allan Poe, the suspense is there. Everything's carefully crafted to create an effect. Um, and Radcliffe would say that a terror movie enhances the soul because it, it, it's it's scaring you. It's terrifying you, but it's making you more aware of, of your own surroundings, of things in the story, of the possibilities, of the nature of good and evil and so forth. Whereas horror shrinks the soul, shrinks the senses. Horror is just how much more blood and guts can we throw at you? And, oh, here's a character we haven't killed yet. Let's do that to them, too. You know, and it's just gratuitous. It's uh, what some people like. They like the splatter movies. Uh, and I guess maybe you could say there's some sort of catharsis in it, but it's not for me. Uh, I, you know, but 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 the terms are all sort of, you know, plastic. So, you know, 
I will talk, you will talk, hear me talk about horror films and, and even the Universal Monster movies is the classic horror movie sometimes because, you know, there's just no pinned down word for this or the other. But if you really get into a good conversation of it, I would argue that they're more terror movies than they are horror films. 